まあ大丈夫ですか ?OK。All right. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for taking time to join this introductory webinar for Jet Academy. Yeah. Wait, uh, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Regina Te, and I will be your presenter for today's webinar. All right. And uh, joining us today here, we have got our executive director, Inoue Sensei. Yeah. Inoue Sensei uh, among us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sensei, hi. Okay, then uh, we also have got our principal, Yamaguchi Sensei, yeah, joining us here today. Konnichiwa. Hello, everybody. Yoroshiku mm. yes. yes. Yeah, and we also have our uh, one of our ex-students, yeah, who is currently studying at the Tokyo University of Science, Ling Wei Senpai. Senpai, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, okay, Ling Wei Senpai. And also we have got one of our current students uh, studying at Jet Academy, uh, Laura Sang. Laura Sang. Hello, good afternoon. Afternoon, ah. Huh? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just give me a moment, ah, huh, as I share screen. Huh? Can you see my screen? Yes. Can, huh? Okay. All right. All right. Now this is a preview, yeah, for the topics that we'll be covering today. Now, we will not be covering everything in depth, okay? But uh, emphasis will be given where necessary and also to all our participants here today, yeah? Uh, if you have got any questions uh, during this presentation, please uh, don't shy shy. Uh, feel free to type your questions in our chat box, yeah? You can type them in Japanese, you can type them in English or in Chinese, uh, Japanese, English, Chinese. And our team, including me, will be responding to your queries, yeah, throughout the presentation, okay? So without further ado, uh, let us start. Yeah. Now, uh, what is uh, Jet Academy? Yeah. So Jet Academy is an educational institution in Tokyo, chartered by the governor of Tokyo in 1988. Okay. By the way, the word uh, Jet uh, is short for Japanese Education in Tokyo. Yeah, Japanese Education in Tokyo. And in the year 2000, Jet Academy was appointed by the Ministry of Education and Science as a preparatory school. Okay, uh, just for your information, there are only about 20 schools recognized as preparatory schools by the Ministry of Education and Science in Japan, yeah? So for those of you here who are worried, uh, you know, is this school dodgy? Can this school be trusted? Please don't worry. I am confident enough to tell you that our school is legit and we are a reputable school in Japan, okay? All right, at any one time, uh, JET can accommodate up to 150 students and currently there are only 68 active students uh, partly due to the pandemic, lah. okay? But uh, as you can see, yeah, majority of our students are from Asia, okay? With Taiwanese being the most, then followed by Indonesians and also Malaysian students, okay? And uh, in general, we have got two main courses yeah, at JET Academy the college preparatory course that focuses on getting into universities and graduate schools and also the Japanese language course that focuses on uh, mastering the Japanese language for conversational usage. Okay, and upon completing these courses, yeah, students could actually apply for universities, for graduate schools, yeah, uh, for vocational schools or what we more commonly uh, call senmon gakko, okay. Uh, or students can also seek for employment in Japan or uh, uh, Japanese companies around the world. Now, let us talk a little bit uh, about the features of our school. Uh, firstly, we provide thorough career and education guidance, allowing our students yeah, to successfully enroll into top education institutions and also get hired by companies in Japan every year. Yeah, uh, our classes are considered full-time, full-time classes, uh, but that being said, uh, we do have activities year-round for our students as well. <coughs> now, some of you may be wondering, uh, what do we mean by what full-time classes, okay? So, for some of you who have done some research on other language schools as well, yeah, uh, we believe that this is not like, this is uh, not the only language school uh, webinar that you've attended. You probably have attended uh, other ones as well. So, you would know, yeah? Uh, almost all language schools in Japan, uh, they will either have their classes uh, in the morning or in the afternoon, yeah? But a little bit different with us because we are, uh, our classes are full-time. Uh, the classes at JET, yeah? Our class starts at 9 a.m. 
and then it will go all the way until uh, 4 or 5 p.m. Okay, now this is the timetable for the college preparatory course, and this is for our Japanese language course, yeah? So you see it still ends at 4 p.m. Huh? Okay, so this is uh, what we call full-time class. Lah. And uh, on top of that, we do provide support for our students taking a JLPT, a EJU, and also the TOEFL exams, yeah? Uh, especially for those EJU subjects like mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry, and biology. Yeah? As you can see here, they are part of the subjects uh, in the timetable for our college preparatory course. Okay, uh, Our school, JET Academy, we have got a special team of teachers yeah, to prepare you for these subjects. Okay, Now, I would like to emphasize here, yeah, uh, having a dedicated team of teachers to support students uh, for these EJU subjects is really not something common that could be found in other language schools. Okay, all right, uh, moving on. Allow me to share some of our students' achievements in uh, EJU and JLPT exams. Yeah, uh, As many of us are aware of, uh, due to the current pandemic, the EJU and JLPT were only held once last year. Yeah, Okay, once last year. But our students, they have worked really very hard. And here, for the Japanese language subject, the average score for November's EJU for JET uh, was uh, 284.7 points. And while our highest scorer scored 354 points out of 400 points, okay? And for your information, the world's average, uh, the world average score was at 238.4 points, yeah? So you can see that our average score is actually uh, already higher than uh, worldwide average, okay? This is something that we strive for, okay? And uh, yes, so here, these are our top 10 scorers uh, last year, okay, in uh, the EJU last November. And you can see all our top 10 scorers, uh, they scored above 300 points, okay? They scored above 300 points. And on top of that, we, did, we, we, we do have one student who scored full marks uh, for the listening and this uh, listening reading comprehension section in the exam. Okay, the full marks is, for this section is 200 points, okay? So next, allow me to move to something that we are more familiar with, the JLPT exam. Okay, last year, JET's uh, passing rate for N1 was 88%. Okay, with our highest scorer scoring this uh, 169 points out of uh, 180 points. Okay, while for JLPT N2, our passing rate was 85.7% uh, with the highest scorer scoring 170 points out of 180 points. Uh. Again, uh, these are some of the remarkable results uh, of our students. Yeah, and on top of that, we also have got five students uh, who scored full marks for these different sections in the JLPT N1 exam. So now if you're wondering uh, why am I here emphasizing on our students' grade, uh, uh, this is because uh, we believe that this is the first step. Okay, Getting good grades is actually the first step uh, to allow our students to be eligible for reputable universities and vocational schools in Japan. Okay, That uh, leads us to the next question. Uh. So how about the acceptance rates into higher education institutions? Yeah. Now, these are the numbers of uh, successful applications uh, from our school uh, in the past 20 years, okay? So, you can see here, yeah, aside from university, yeah, we also have got many students who have chosen to enroll into these uh, vocational schools instead, Senmon Gakko, yeah, vocational schools. Now, we do understand, yeah, for some countries, the vocational school itself uh, may not give a very good impression, okay, for some countries like Malaysia, when we talk about vocational school, it's like, mm, mm, okay. Um, but let me assure you that in Japan, vocational schools are very reputable and also very reliable. Yeah? Uh, you can find courses like uh, fashion and beauty. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nazwa, allow me to mute you. Yeah. Okay. So, eh, sorry, for this uh, uh, vocational. Uh, schools, yeah. Uh, the courses you can find in vocational schools uh, are like fashion and beauty, a uh, confectionery and culinary arts, yeah. Uh, animation and game design, yeah. Also interpretation and and business. Uh, you can see that this course, the courses are uh, covers uh, different fields and industry as well, yeah. So for those of you who want to know a little bit more about vocational schools, yeah. Now you can actually, uh, you know, uh, 
scan this QR code. So for those of you who are actually using your phone to actually join this uh, session, uh, you know, feel free to print screen, uh, print screen, like, screenshot, screenshot this uh, site, uh, this page, so that you can actually uh, refer to the QR code later. Okay, so here we have got a list of uh, the famous uh, vocational schools in Tokyo and Osaka that is uh, usually the top choice for our students. Lah. Okay, now uh, vocational schools uh, in Japan usually have got the latest facilities. Okay, they also hire professionals uh, who are still active in their line of work to guide uh, their students. So uh, chances of securing a job yeah, after graduation are usually high for students mm -hmm. who graduated from these institutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, so, all right, now I've been talking about uh, all these achievements and getting into higher education institutions, yeah, but I believe for many of you, one of the questions you have lingering in your head is, uh, which course should I be choosing? Yeah, which course should I be choosing? So I mentioned just now that the two main courses at Jet Academy are the college preparatory course that focuses on getting into universities and graduate school, and also the Japanese language course, yeah, that focuses on mastering the Japanese language. Okay, now I will talk a little bit, yeah, on this uh, business course towards the end of my presentation. However, uh, let us focus here for now, yeah. Uh, which course should you be choosing uh, that in, would depend entirely on what you are aiming for. Okay, so first, yeah, let's look at what are the requirements uh, to get into higher education institutions in Japan. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Eh? Okay, and as you can see, yeah, uh, regardless if you want to get into university uh, or a vocational school, Semong Gako, uh, completing 12 years of formal education and also passing JRPT N2 would be the minimum requirement. Okay, and on top of that, uh, for those of you who would like to apply for university, you are also required to have taken the required EJU subjects. Okay, EJU subjects. So, to put it simply, if you would like to get into a university uh, or a graduate school, then the college preparatory course would be the course to go for. Okay, please choose our college preparatory course if you would like to apply for universities and graduate school. Okay, but uh, the reason why is because extra preparation would be required. Okay, and this guidance and support yeah, would only be provided in our college preparatory course. Okay, so um, some of uh, some of the, uh, the countries, yeah, uh, they only have got this 11 years of standard formal education. Uh, I'm going to take Malaysia, for example, again. Uh, Malaysia, the students, uh, as they complete secondary school, they would have only completed 11 years of standard formal education. So does it mean uh, that students from Malaysia, they cannot further their studies in Japan? Uh, the answer is no. Okay, in fact, if you have only completed 11 years of formal education, you can actually make up that one year by taking our college preparatory course. So you can see here, for those who have completed 11 years of formal education, even if they want to go to this vocational school, we would suggest them to, uh, they have to take this uh, college prepar preparatory, preparatory course to be uh, eligible yeah, to further their studies, tertiary studies in Japan. Okay, now, on the other hand, yeah, uh, some vocational schools in Japan, they will tell you that, yeah, you know, we do accept those who have only completed 11 years of formal education. Uh, however, uh, these vocational schools uh, may not be common, okay? And also there are a certain uh, risks. Lah. So for such cases, we would actually advise our students yeah, to check and confirm again uh, with the vocational school if you are eligible beforehand, okay? Even before you want to come and study in our, our, our school, okay? So you just have to tell the vocational school that I've only completed 11 years of formal education. And then, you know, if I get N2, can I really apply to your school? Okay, you need to check beforehand. Eh? If not, it's too risky. But uh, in our opinion, yeah, uh, instead of just putting all your hopes into that one or two vocational schools, uh, for those who have completed 11 years of formal education, yeah, the safest road, in our opinion, would be to take the college preparatory course, okay? You complete the college preparatory course and later you have got an array of uh, choices, lah, okay, uh, to choose from, okay? Instead of just depending on that one or two vocational school that allow you the 11 years, uh, just go for our college preparatory course and then after that you have, you know, like a buffet to choose from, okay? Uh, 
right here again uh, we have the timetable for our one year college preparatory course okay so uh, as you can see the eju subjects are here uh, one question that we often get uh, is uh, do I need to take all the EJU subjects? Do I need to sit for all the EJU subjects? The answer is uh, no. The answer is no, yeah? So you only need to take yeah, the subjects that you need to sit for, for the exam, yeah? And which subject do you need to sit for uh, would depend on which course and which university you are applying to, okay? So this is the keyword, okay? And then here we have uh, the Japanese language uh, course timetable. All right, as you can see, the Japanese language course timetable when compared with our college preparatory course, the focus would only be on Japanese language. Yeah, and then this one is for the beginner Japanese language course. Okay, so uh, here, yeah, uh, allow me to first uh, share a, a video, a video, yeah, that was made by one of our students. Okay, uh, they're going to share how is it like to study at Jet Academy. Yeah, so yes.
やっぱり礼儀だねみんなが笑ってくれてちゃんと優しい話したりとかうんやはりこれがイメージが大事でとても好きになりましたあ本当に文法の使い方はめっちゃ難しいと思う The whole thing, no, I'm joking.、Uh, probably just preparing everything beforehand. You know, I think that's a really good thing to remember. Get things done as fast as you can. Yeah. Meeting deadlines. Mojigoi, ito. Kanji, just the. I'm a Korean person. So, I'm a Korean person. どっかいの時間が十分ではないのでその理由はやはり漢字とその文字語の量この辺が一番大変だなと思います。大変かやっぱり留学生にとって一番大変は面接だろう。面接が直接あって日本語の学校も心配して。ドキドキするね。まあでも私コロナのせいでオンラインでやってるけど、やはり面接官の顔に見たら怖いですね。うん、OK。All right。Just give us a moment な、ね。OK。So Uh, as you can see, yeah,、uh, we actually stopped the video halfway through because、uh, it's, it's going to be a very long video if we continue on. So anyway,、um, For now, yeah,、uh, you've watched the video, you've seen a snippet of you know, the life in Japan for our students. So allow me to now invite,、uh, invite over yeah, one of our current students,、uh, Laura. Laura, are you there? Yeah, I'm、yes. here. Okay, Laura, thank you very much.、Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to invite Laura here for a quick sharing. Okay, so allow me to、uh, give, I, I, I know she very, she's very nervous right now, <laughs> but allow me to give her,、uh, do a self、uh, in. What, give, do a simple introduction for her.、Uh, Laura Sang, yeah? Laura actually started learning Japanese at her home country in Malaysia, yeah? Malaysia、uh, before joining our October intake last year. Okay? And she's currently taking the、uh, college preparatory course that I've showed you all just now. Yeah? So, okay, Laura, let's start.、Uh. I've got a few questions for you. You are currently taking the college preparatory course, is it right? Yes. All right.、Uh. So, first question. Is the college preparatory course difficult? I would say that it is difficult because difficult. Of, the, of the long hours you have to go through almost every day as、I、you、see. have afternoon classes.、Uh -huh. um, but I think as long as you can manage your time properly,、mm -hmm. you'll be fine. Oh, okay. So, how many,、uh, can you tell me on average how many hours you study a day?、Mm -hmm. Three to four hours. Three to four hours on top of class.、Uh? <laughs> Not every day, but. <laughs> Not every day, I, huh? Yeah. I'll, I'll do my best to study. Do your best, huh? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your information, Laura is on our the a, class A.、Uh? She's a student from、uh, A class, okay? So she is a very, very wonderful student, okay? So, okay, Laura, I've got a question on, yeah?、Um, For this、uh, college prepar preparatory course, yeah, in your opinion, what is the hardest, what is the hardest、uh, in the course? For me, it will be the sciences and math because,、mm, because everything is in Japanese and,、mm. and for math,、um, it's a lot more difficult than the math we do in Malaysia. So, oh,、yeah. mm, okay. So,、uh, are you actually thankful yeah, that、uh, our preparatory course, we have got this group of dedicated teachers to help the students you know, to tackle the subjects in EJU? Yes, I'm definitely really grateful for my teachers. <laughs> so,、uh, just, just a, a question.、Lah. Assuming if Jet Academy d o not have this,、uh, what you call it, this, pre, this、uh, EJU subjects,、huh? what do you think you will have to do in order to meet the, the requirement? I will have to start everything from scratch and you know, buy my own books. And,、mm -hmm. and if I don't know anything, I'll have to either ask around or. Re rely on the internet, which is definitely going to be a struggle. 
Oh, and also very scary, right? I, I, yeah. I believe it's going to be very scary because we wouldn't know who should we ask and, uh, you know, what should we do, right? I mean, we, we, we don't know who can check the answers for us, correct? Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, my last question for you, yeah? Okay. Uh, uh, don't be so nervous. Okay, not last. Uh, first, uh, are you planning to apply for university or this uh, vocational school or are you planning to apply for both? I'm planning to apply for university only. University only, yeah. And mm -hmm. what are the EJU subjects that you are taking at the moment? Can I can I just know what course do you intend to get into and what are the subjects that you are focusing on at the moment? Right now I'm planning to go into the food science course and I'm mm -hmm. for EJU subjects I'm taking bi biology, mm -hmm. chemistry and math. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Very challenging, huh? Very mm -hmm. challenging, but I believe you could do it. All right, last question. This is really the last question from me. Uh, in your opinion, yeah. Studying Japanese in your home country, in Malaysia, yeah? Is it different from studying Japanese in Japan? It's definitely a lot more, a lot more different. Because in, oh. Malaysia, mm. in, in Malaysia, you, you won't have the opportunity to talk, to communicate in Japanese other than the class. So, but, but in Japan, you have to talk to the, maybe the store owners or you'll be able to make friends. Mm -hmm. And you get to practice your language skills a lot more. Mm. Okay, so all right, Laura, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, don't, 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 don't be nervous. Thank you very much. Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Laura, uh, one of our current students at, at Jet Academy. Laura, I wish you all the best in applying for the university of your choice. Yeah, thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay, just wait, uh, give me a moment. Let me allow my share screen again. Uh. Eto, okay, can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen? Can I? Uh? Uh, the this screen. Okay, if you cannot see my screen, uh, please let me know uh, just in case. All right. Uh, so for those of you yeah, who are interested in applying for the uh, April 2022 intake, uh, which is uh, the April yeah, intake next April year. Next year. Uh, wait, uh, somebody's mic is... Okay. So for those of you who are interested in applying for the April 2022 intake next year, we are accepting applications from September until mid-November. Okay, so the application starts now. Okay, even if you want to get into, uh, you know, study in our school next year, the application starts now, yeah. Uh, do take note that you will need some time to prepare the required documents, okay. It's not as easy as just, you know, fill in the forms and then submit, okay. We are going to tell you, uh, the even the forms have a few, okay. Then we're going to tell you what are the required documents that you need to, you need yeah. to submit. There are some scholarships, you know, you can apply, apply. Uh, sorry, yeah. I will answer the question. Uh, our, our team will answer the question if you type the question in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Before I continue on, just let me repeat again. Uh, for those of you who have got questions you would like to ask, yeah. Uh, while while I'm presenting, feel free to uh, type your questions, whether in English, in Mandarin, or in Chinese, or in Japanese. Yeah. In our chat box, and our team, including uh, including me, we will be uh, you know, uh, answering your queries. Okay. Yeah. So back here. Yeah? Um, yes, uh, there will be documents that are required, okay? So, we would advise you to decide early, lah, okay? Uh, decide early, if possible, by the end of October, so that it would not be a rush on your side, yeah? And the courses are available for the April 2022 intake are uh, the two-year college preparatory course, uh, the one-year college preparatory course, and also the Japanese language course ranging from one to two years, okay? Now, for those of you, who are interested uh, to find out more, yeah? You want to get more information, you can actually scan this QR code, okay? Our team should be uh, pasting the, the, the link also on our chat box, okay? If not, uh, feel free to take a screenshot of, of this page, yeah? Uh, and if you already have a handphone in hand, then you can actually yeah, scan this QR code. You can scan the QR code and then to get into uh, the, you get the application guide in PDF. Okay, and uh, just give me a moment. Uh. Okay, so we've talked so much yeah, about courses and studying. Okay, I believe some of you, uh, you may be wondering, Ayo, this uh, student from Jet Academy, they must be nerds, uh, only focus on studying, studying, no life. Uh. But no, that's not the case. Okay, um, our students, uh, our students at Jet Academy, they study hard, they actually play even harder. Okay, uh, at Jet Academy, we have got a var variety of activities planned yeah, for our students to participate in. 
All right. And one of the most well-received activities is the cultural exchange uh, activity yeah, with Japanese college student where uh, we invite yeah, Japanese uh, college or university student or the locals yeah, to join our discussions, uh, to join our school events, and also to join our field trips. Yeah? And vice versa, our students also participate uh, in activities hosted by the college students as well. Okay, and the cultural exchange activities like this uh, will be conducted to over 20 times a year. So uh, if you are, uh, if you intend to join in, a regardless, uh, you want to join in April or if you would like to join in uh, October, uh, you will still have a lot of chance uh, to experience our this uh, activity. So do not worry. And in, the, in addition to that, our students also have got chance to watch this uh, Japanese traditional arts like Kabuki, yeah, uh, to join outdoor activities like hiking Mount Fuji, uh, you know, uh, play sports, uh, friendly match, yeah, sports with uh, the locals and also outdoor BBQ. And also... Oh. Uh, there are homestay programs yeah, during the summer and winter holidays where our students, uh, you can visit any part of Japan uh, as far as Hokkaido and Kyushu if you would like. Okay, So of course, all talk. Let me just show you uh, some pictures. Yeah? Allow me to share some pictures of... Um, the events that we have yeah now this is our school uh, school front okay so this is in april those of you who are coming in april next year this would be something you will be seeing lah, huh? this will be something you see in april the school front okay and ah uh, do take note that uh, uh, all these pictures uh, that we share here they are pre covid like pre pandemic that's why you don't see people wearing masks you don't see the social distancing okay so this all these are the the activities uh, taken before pandemic so here we we have a hanami picnic in spring yeah where our students will gather together you know go and look for a sakura tree and then they'll have a picnic session together with everybody okay if this is in spring and in summer which is actually now now it's actually uh, towards the end of summer uh, in summer we have got this outdoor barbecue session okay for some of you uh, maybe you will be wondering wow barbecue in summer must be very hot but yes it's an experience to try out uh, in japan <laughs> okay so you can see yeah. Executive directors uh, here, you know, sensei here, uh, also yes. taking pictures. I believe he is also waiting for you know our students to you know share him some food. <laughs> okay, uh, and besides the outdoor activities, we do also have like this uh, tea ceremony experience class, what we call sado. Yeah, this is one of our teachers, Tokui Sensei. She will be guiding uh, students. Uh, to how to perform this tea ceremony, you know, making sure yeah, that students here don't waste too much of a tea powder. Lah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now here we have got our students, yeah, wearing yukata. Wearing yukata. And Lona. Uh, wearing yukata, yeah. And uh to they're actually preparing to uh what you call this, attend or take part in this uh, summer festivals okay so what are the summer festivals available you know you you all have heard about you know the fireworks festival in japan they are really great okay of course this is only part of them and uh this is a yearly homestay program in the city with hot spring we uh, known as yugawara okay and this program would last about a week where our students will go over there and then they have a chance lah, to mingle with the locals there as well okay now here is uh, where our students uh, and also our senpais, they all participated in this uh, summer event. So as you can see, uh, I've shared a lot of summer uh, activities here because summer is really the time where, where things are, you know, events are really happening and all, okay? And not only uh, summer events like this, this is where our student went all the way to Hokkaido, yeah, to feed the calf, the cow, <laughs> okay? So in summer, yeah, uh, Hokkaido will be a great place to visit. Okay, you can actually experience something different there. It's not that typical all snow Hokkaido. It will be Hokkaido with greens, okay? And then here we have uh, mountain climbing. Yes, so for those of you who likes hiking, okay, you want to uh, reach the summit, the top of Mount Fuji, yeah? It usually has to be done in summer, yeah? I believe it only can be done in summer. Okay, so if you are interested, uh, make a trip up to Mount Fuji, okay? And here we have the famous uh, Great Buddha of uh, Kamakura, okay? You see our students and then if you can spot, this is actually our principal, Yamaguchi Sensei here, uh, hiding among the students. I believe this is how she tried to stay young. Okay, sorry, very bad joke. Okay, <laughs> um, fast forward here, we have Autumn. Okay, Autumn is where all the trees, uh, the leaves of the tree will turn fiery red, yeah? And also in Autumn, we will have friendly matches, 
friendly sport matches with uh, the locals, you know, it could be Japanese uh, university students or college students, yeah, or even the just local uh, uh, from the city. Yeah, and fast forward here is uh, the year end party. Now, year end party at Jet Academy are always planned and hosted entirely by our students. Okay, so our students will be preparing everything for the year end party. We got Bonen Kai. Yeah, and uh, here we have, uh, you know, in the winter holidays, our students would go up north to, you know, for skiing experience, lah. okay, for a ski trip, okay, so these are the activities for the fall season, so what about in class, yeah, what do our students do in class, so at just now the video, you can see that they mingle around, yeah, so here we have got uh, the students are uh, divided into groups, and then each of them, as you can see, they've got this uh, newspaper articles, so this is where they, they discuss, yeah, they, the, they were divided into groups, and they discuss about uh, newspaper articles, and besides that, we also have got interactive sessions, yeah, with university students, this is where our students actually attended the this interactive ses session uh, at the the, the university to uh, university of vocational school okay and of course not only that uh, the university student will also come over to our school and join our sessions as well la. okay and here we have uh, we every year we do host trips uh, to visit our local uh, primary schools and here you can see our students uh, uh, from Indonesia as you can see the map here uh, these Indonesian students they are actually introducing their home country uh, to this group of uh, Japanese primary school students here okay I believe primary school students they, they, they don't know much about other countries uh. so this is uh, what we do every year we host trips to visit uh, schools and etc. Okay, and finally, ah, finally here, uh, this is an example of uh, the sharing session yeah, by our seniors. Now, these seniors they have actually completed the course at Jet Academy. They have also successfully gotten uh, into yeah the universities as you can see here, Meiji University, the university or even Senmon Gakko of their choice. Okay, so the, we invite the seniors back to our school to share with the juniors, okay, for example, how did they fare, uh, how, how, how did they prepare for the exams, you know, uh, how much sleepless night, sleepless night they have to endure, yeah, so uh, how much coffee they had, you know, and of course, uh, especially for students who want to apply to the same universities or education institution as them, then what is uh, what, what should they be focusing on, you know? Uh, in fact, yeah, since today we have got uh, one of our senpai, our senior, yeah, Lingwei senpai here. Uh, Lingwei senpai, are you here? <laughs> Lingwei yeah, senpai? Yeah. yeah, okay, wait. Uh. All right, so since Lingwei senpai is here, allow me to invite Lingwei senpai to give everyone, yeah, here, everyone here a, a, a snippet. Uh, a short preview of uh, what is it, what is that sharing session, uh, how does it feel like, okay? So first, uh, Senpai, can I have you to do a simple self-introduction of yourself? Can you tell us uh, when did you uh, graduate, completed the course at JET, and also where are you studying right now, Senpai? Okay, uh, yeah, I try to, uh, can, can you share me the co-host so I give can share uh. Yes, give me a moment, ah, yeah. uh, uh, allow, uh. Just okay. okay, can everyone see the screen right here? Yes. Okay, so a uh, uh, short self-introduction. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ling Wei, Tam Ling Wei. I'm a Malaysian, 25 years old this year. Uh, I, I was in Jet Academy from 2014 to 2016, uh, which is during that time, I think around 18, 19 years old. I finished my high school in Malaysia and I came to Jet Academy when I was 18. And right now I'm in Tokyo University of Science, uh, Japanese Tokyo Dikadai Gaku. Uh, yeah, and as you can see here, yeah, it's quite long so maybe you can ask the questions later so mm -hmm. it's my seven year in japan and and surfing snowboard uh camping uh golf these are my hobbies mm, okay thank you very much for the simple stuff introduction now my first question yeah okay. so before we move to university question my first question would be uh you also uh took the college preparatory course at jet academy correct yeah okay so can you tell me has the college preparatory course at Jet Academy helped you prepare for your uh, university application and also university right now? Mm. Yes, I would say it. Uh, Jet really helped me a lot 
mm-hmm. especially uh, one of my uh, uh, sensei uh, mm-hmm. during that time. Uh, how do we say? Uh, actually, from what I think, in my opinion, these two years of course, uh, my first year, I was I was playing a lot. I was seriously having a lot of fun in the uh, academy. Mm-hmm. And later on, my second year, I went to the college direction course. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it was really hard to be honest. It was really because you go from the beginner level of Japanese and you go to the advanced level, where everything is so formal, Japan, uh, formal uh, type of Japanese, which is very mm-hmm. hard. So, but overall, I think uh, the uh, the most important part is the teachers in Jet Academy has really helped me a lot, and we I without them I don't think I'm here right now today. Uh, maybe I will go back Malaysia without a university. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, really. It, uh, <laughs> okay. So you were. I mean, thank you for giving us so much credit. But um, yes. Uh. Actually, many um, I I I would have to say that many do not understand how hard is it and how tough is it to actually uh prepare for yeah. to apply for university, especially in Japan as a foreigner. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I've got uh the next question. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, okay, yeah. in your opinion, is passing you know JLPT N two alone uh, sufficient for anyone who wants to get into a Japanese university or even you know Senmongako because you see the, the requirement I showed you all just now it says that minimum requirement is you need to pass N2 so do you think that passing N2 uh, JRPT N2 alone is sufficient or you know should one aim higher and and you know what, what what's your take on that? Uh, okay that's a very good question uh, to me I think uh, N2 might be the standard mm-hmm. but I think that's also and uh, places where they accept entry, mm-hmm. but I think it's very rare. So mm-hmm. I think the best way is to at least get N N two. Mm. Yeah. So you think N two is sufficient? And what do you think N two itself is uh, enough to cope with whatever that the course, uh, you know, whatever the lecturer is going to teach, or do you think that you know if one wants to be more, uh, feel better? Mm. What 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 what, what yes. do you think? Uh yes, definitely. Like. Okay, so uh, so as we can as we know, N one is the highest level and N five mm-hmm. is the lowest one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the compulsory one sh- sh- would be N N two. Mm-hmm. So I think from N two, like uh, da- daily Japanese usage, mm-hmm. uh, N two is really sufficient. It it almost cover up every every part of the daily conversation. What teacher mm-hmm. is talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for the N one level, the highest level in Japanese, I don't think you'll use that a lot because mm-hmm. it's it's more you know the Japanese is very formal mm-hmm. and you don't use it really that much. It's mm-hmm. it's uh this is just something as a certification that mm-hmm. oh I'm really good in Japanese so mm. uh, I can show my N one. But mm-hmm. uh in reality, I think N two is really sufficient. It's more than enough. Uh. To understand about Japanese language and cover up everything you need in Japan. Interesting. So there you have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you intend to get into higher educational institutions, please aim for M uh, N two. Yeah, passing passing N two would be the minimum, and according to our senpai here, passing N two would be sufficient. Okay. Now, uh, senpai, last question I have for you is: What advice? Do you have for our current students who wants to apply for universities or you know uh, higher education institutions, and also you know what are your advice for those who also want to come considering uh, consider studying in Japan? Okay, that's a lot of questions. So okay, <laughs> I, I answer one by one. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, first of all, mm-hmm. I think uh, study in Japan is not as easy as uh, yeah, it's really hard. So. I think that um, how do you say studying in Japan? Um, of course, Japanese will be very hard, and then the culture, making friends, will be very hard. Mm. Uh, wait, there's too much questions to produce. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay, can you repeat one more time? Your okay, I, I I go one, one by one. one yeah. One. Uh, firstly, for students who are you know like you know like our 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 junior here, Laura Sang, yeah, she's. Yeah going to get into applying for universities and all. Yeah. So what would be your advice for her? Okay. 
my advice for her is uh, uh, if you plan to go to university, so at least get an M2 or an M3, mm -hmm. to be honest, EJU uh, wouldn't be... Okay, for me, that during that time, actually my my EJU marks are below average, to be honest. Mm. I'm, I'm not that a good student. But what makes the difference for me is my English is good. Mm. So, uh, I have I have TOEFL during the time. It's, mm -hmm. uh, so, it was around 90 or 100. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in Japan, they really appreciate if you have that English, English language there. Especially if you have English language there uh, with a TOEFL, you it's most likely uh, you you can you can uh, go for any uh, higher level schools mm. like uh, like as uh, Tokyo University Waseda Keio. So mm. English is one big factor. Another thing is uh, Japanese language. Uh, so so and uh, and to me, your actually okay. Let's say if you didn't get a really good results so you're not that good and uh but to i think that there's a lot of schools in japan where you mm -hmm. can enter because the, the standards is there's a lot of standards you, you can it's it, it's really up to you like what do you want to do if you want to do uh you want to go to a corporate company or mm -hmm. you want to go to a startup mm -hmm. or you want to do uh, start start in your own business. It, mm -hmm. That's really very wide range. So, mm. uh, so even though your your marks is good, your marks is bad. There's always somewhere for you to go. It I is, see. I think there's no worries to it. Yeah. I see. So as long as you just do what you can, there must be a, a way out, lah. Yeah, there must be a way. Uh, okay. don't don't be afraid. There's no jobs for you if you're not good enough. Uh, mm. there's, uh, you're not good enough so you can't mm. enter a university there's no such thing there's always a university who will want you yeah. I see interesting interesting okay so the last one would be uh, so for, for this uh, you know our participants here currently yeah. uh, in our webinar mm. what advice would you mm. be for uh, would you have for them if they are considering to study in Japan mm. study in Japan mm. Would you ask them to, you know, just come over, study in Japan or, you know, any advice you have for them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay. I'll share one short story. So, yes. when I, okay, before before I came to Japan, I was a Jap uh, Japan lover. I really love Japan. Uh -huh. But, you know, when time goes on, you have, you go through, uh, what we call that, go through culture shock. Mm -hmm. We were having regrets why did I come here. It was really hard that time. Mm -hmm. But uh, but later on it made me grow as a person, mm -hmm. uh, being in Japan. And so I think studying in Japan is uh it's still up to you. Mm -hmm. Like what do you really want to do in Japan? Mm -hmm. What what mm -hmm. is your interest in Japan? Why why Japan? You have to ask yourself. Why, why do you want to come to Japan for animation, uh, maybe for a corporate company and things mm -hmm. like that? Right. Mm -hmm. so ask yourself. Because overall, it's it's like studying in UK, studying in Australia, mm -hmm. studying in America. It's, I think it's actually the same. But what's different about it is you meet different cultures. You J Japan is a whole different culture by itself. Mm -hmm. So you have to be ready for that. And uh, it, of course, it wouldn't be easy Japanese, uh -huh. but as long you go through that, you you will have a very good time in Japan. I can I can promise you that. Mm. So okay, uh, there you have it, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Lingwei Senpai. Okay, thank you very much for your, this uh, very, uh, for, for your sharing. Okay, of course, we've got a lot of uh, insights, yeah. Uh, not something that we can actually find, to be honest. Uh, what Lingwe Senpai actually uh, shared, yeah. It's not something that you can easily find uh, on this, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the internet. Sometimes you need to find certain groups to be able to tell you this, yeah. So, okay. Uh, thank you again, eh, Lingwei Senpai. All the best in uh, university. And I know now you're a fourth year student again. All right. So <laughs> um, all the best uh, uh, in this uh, coming year. Okay. 
All right. Uh, so just give me a moment. Yeah. Let me share my screen again. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Can? Yes. Huh? Okay. So uh, now, uh, after the sharing session from our senpai, let me talk a little bit about uh, the employment in Japan. Okay, so I know some of you here, you actually came uh, you to find out, you know, if, if it is possible to work in Japan. All right. Now, for the past few years, we've seen an increase in the number of international students getting a job in Japan. Yeah. And we also see uh, an increase in the number of companies employing uh, foreigners uh, in Japan. All right. Now, in the year 2019, yeah, out of 300,000 international students, uh, close to 31,000 students were employed by companies in Japan. Yeah, and uh, forty percent of them were from uh, universe were, were university graduates, and close to about three thousand nine hundred here, as you can see, they are students from uh, Japanese language schools in Japan. Okay, so the question that you probably want to know, yeah, is uh, actually how can I work in Japan? Okay, how can I work in Japan? Now, firstly, you need to be a university graduate to be eligible for a work working visa. Okay, now what I'm saying here is a working visa. Yeah, I'm not talking about professional pass. Okay, so we are talking about working visa here. You need to be, uh, you need to at least have obtained a bachelor's degree from university. Okay, and then uh, do take note that working visas are not available for certain industries and occupations. Yeah, in, in certain cases, it would be uh, based on a case to case basis. All right, and lastly, uh, communication skills in Japan is one of the priorities when it comes to getting a good job in Japan. Uh, most of you would have heard the minimum requirement is N1, but at Jet Academy, we push our students higher. We would ask them to aim for a minimum of N1 instead. Okay, sorry, uh, the minimum, yeah, I think I said it correctly. Uh, outside, the minimum is N2, but uh, for Jet Academy, we push our students yeah, to aim higher. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are interested yeah, to want to learn a little bit more about uh, business Japanese. Yeah, we do have a course, a short-term course, something I mentioned earlier. Okay, now this uh, short-term business Japanese course, uh, there are two intakes a year, one in April and the other one in October. And do take note that this uh, GRPT entry proficiency is required, yeah, if you would like to join this course. Okay, and uh, the thing is, uh, uh, you can actually, because this is a short-term course, you can actually uh, study through a visitor's visa. But currently, yeah, the Japanese borders yeah, uh, are currently closed to visitors traveling into Japan. So for the time being, if you would like to opt for this course, you would have to apply it through our long-term course instead. Okay, uh, If you want to know more about this course, you can actually uh, download again, uh, go to our application guide. Yeah, The QR code is here. All right. And uh, if you would like to know more, kindly reach out to us uh, also. Okay. And these are some of the dormitories we have. Okay. So these are our dormitories. Yeah. So it's pretty convenient to uh, and straightforward to get from school uh, to from, from, from dorm dormitory to school. Okay. Uh, the closest dormitory we had would be about three to five minutes walk you know, door to door, okay, with a few distant ones, we'll, we'll, we'll need you to take some the train ride. Lah. Okay, so of course, these are not the only options available. If you want to opt for, you know, something like a homestay, uh, kindly reach out to us. Okay, and applications for dormitories in our list here could be done through the school. So you can be rest assured that things are taken care of. Okay. Ah, yes, this slide. Okay, I know that a handful of you are waiting for this slide. Scholarships. Okay, what are the scholarships available? Can we apply for scholarships? Okay, I'm going to answer a few questions here. Now, uh, these are the, uh, this is one of the lists of the scholarships available to our students. Okay, but then again, uh, do take note that this is not the only scholarships that we can apply for. Okay, there are actually many, but these are the more common ones uh, in our school. All right. So here you can see uh, the table. Uh, this is for the past 10 years. We could see the scholarships awarded to our students. Uh, and this uh, scholarships here, it is the scholarships that our students get before they complete the course at JET and then before uh, going over to universities. Okay, So most of our students upon graduating uh, our course, yeah, when they get into the university, they, they most of our students, they receive a scholarship of some sort. Okay, So if your question is, if your question is, uh, can uh, international student apply for other scholarships? The answer is yes. Uh, some of you may be asking, can I get any scholarships before 
studying in Japan. That means I get scholarship first, then only I go and study in Japan. Now, that would be quite rare and that would definitely depend on what is available in your country. Okay, in your country. Okay, so usually uh, our advice would be students, you come over and study in Japan. Then with the results you have for your first semester or your first year, you apply for uh, scholarships instead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I have, you know, throughout uh, my presentation, I've seen that you all have been asking a lot of questions. Yeah, now that's good. Okay, so keep the question coming. Okay, uh, here I will just introduce a few questions that maybe uh, some of you are interested. Okay, uh, of course, feel free to keep the questions coming and our team will be... Um, will be answering your question. And also, don't worry, yeah, for those of you, if we have not answered your question here, uh, after this uh, webinar ends, you can actually stay back and have a chat with us, okay? And I will also share uh, how you can contact our other, uh, our, our office as well, okay? So, firstly, um, can you explain a little more about the application process from start until going getting into Japan? Now, assuming that you are interested to apply for this April 2022 intake, okay, uh, September is coming, as I've mentioned just now. Uh, you, the, uh, wait, uh, <laughs> everything okay there? Okay, so uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. sorry, yeah, uh, sorry if I, if I, Sorry. Okay. Um, for the what you call this, the application period yeah will be from September until mid November. Okay. And how do you actually uh want to find out about us? You just contact us, Jet Academy, or our overseas office yeah, which I'm gonna share uh the list with you later. Okay. So contact us, get to know how or where you can get this uh application form, and also what are the documents required uh that you need to submit lah. Okay, so after getting your application and required document, we will be applying for your certificate of eligibility from our from from the government. Okay, uh, some of you may be wondering what in the world is this uh, certificate of eligibility? In short, we call it COE. Uh, certificate of eligibility is a document that is issued by the Ministry of Justice. Yeah, that allows uh, a person to actually exchange for a, a certain visa. Let's say, for example, here you will be exchanging it for a student visa at your uh, local embassy, at your Japanese embassy in your country. Okay, so the issuance of this uh, certificate of eligibility will be at around the end of February. Okay, around the end of February, in which once we confirm that the COE is issued, then you will be asked to make payments for your you know, the school fees and uh, your, your dormitory. Then uh, we will send over your COE to you, oh, and with the well. with the physical COE, yeah, you Who's can actually with the physical COE you can apply for um, the student visa at the Japanese embassy in your country. Okay, so after getting your student visa, then you can prepare lah, buy um buy the air ticket. Okay, um. Uh, you know, pack your things up and get ready to fly over to Japan. The April intake will start uh, early April next year. Okay, so this is how the process is going to look like, yeah, to apply from start until getting into Japan. Now, uh, the question, this one, uh, will Jet Academy help me apply for universities when my course at Jet Academy ends? Okay, so this question is a bit funny, but what the student wanted to ask was, uh, will Jet Academy apply for university on my behalf? Okay, will Jet apply on my behalf when my course ends? The answer is, students, you have to apply for universities by yourself. Okay, what Jet Academy will do is we will provide you the guidance and the support. Okay, but in order to apply for, you know, universities and all, you would have to do it by yourself. Yeah, so do take note, we are going to provide you guidance and support, but applying for it, the university itself, you have to do, be doing it yourself, yeah? Okay. Uh, this question is uh, often, the question that we've often uh, received, uh, how much does it cost to study at Jet Academy? Uh, this is our fee structure, yeah? Now, this fee structure, you can actually obtain from our website, okay? You can actually obtain from our website through this link here, okay? Um, as uh, just now in the chat group, my our, our team has also shared yeah our our this uh, website the homepage link okay, so 
um, what we need you to understand is number one, the school fees yeah, will vary, of course, depending on which course you are going to take. That's number one. And also do take note that the, the costs here, the figures here, uh, cost of living and other miscellaneous fee are not included yet. Okay, which brings us to the next question, including cost of living, how much is it to study in Tokyo? <laughs> okay, so this is just an example, uh, an estimation that we've actually uh, calculated out. Okay, uh, assuming that you want to take the Japanese language course, yeah, the one year Japanese language course at Jet Academy. This is a school fee that you need to pay 740,000 yen. Okay, then for your cost of living, uh, including rental, your daily meals, your transportation, utilities, national health insurance, and others, yeah, it will come up to about 120,000 uh, yen per month. Okay, now this figure we, did, we didn't just pluck it out from, on, from, you know, from nowhere. Lah. This figure we got it from Jasso. Jasso said the average will be about 120,000 yen. Uh, expected, yeah, 120,000 yen per month, which makes it up to about 1.4, 1.5 million yen per year, okay? So if you add all this up, it will come up to about 2.2 .2 million yen. If you cannot comprehend how much is this figure, this is a, a, a list, okay, that I have actually uh, prepared instead, okay? But of course, this one is just for example, uh, it's for, 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 sorry, for reference, okay? Uh, the final cost is, is definitely going to depend on a lot of other factors. So this is just a rough estimation, okay? All right, uh, just give me a moment. Uh. Uh, I see that we've got many questions, yeah? So for those of you who have got many questions uh, and you know our team is uh, also trying very hard to answer them, if you have, if our, if your questions are not answered, please feel free to stay back after this webinar so that we can actually have a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, chat on it. Uh. Uh, again, let me emphasize yeah, for this, um, those who are interested to apply for this April 2022 intake, our application period is from 1st of September until the 15th of November. Uh, you are advised to decide early because document preparation will take time. Yeah? Please, uh, if, you, if possible, decide by the end of October. But, uh, you know, that will be better for you. Lah. No, don't rush uh, everything. Um, the courses available would be college preparatory two-year course, uh, then the college preparatory one-year course, and also the Japanese language course. Okay. So for more information, kindly, uh, kindly visit uh, this QR code, scan this QR code, or visit our website at uh, jet.ac.jp. Okay. We are going to post this uh, link again later. Yeah. All right. And also... Uh, besides, I mean, I believe that you also have got a lot of other, other questions, okay? Um, you can actually visit, uh, contact or make a trip to visit our overseas agent if you're not in Japan to seek for more information. We have agents in uh, Korea, uh, Hong Kong, Macau, uh, Taiwan, Thailand, Malaysia, and also in Indonesia, okay? So I've only put up their logos here. I've not put up the links uh, because it's going to look very messy. But what you can do is you can, again, screenshot this page. Okay, screenshot this page, or if you already have a handphone in hand, you can QR code, scan this QR code, which is going to bring you to a link uh, in our web page that has all the contact information of our, um, this uh, agent, uh, overseas agent, okay? Now, if your country is not listed here, please do not worry. You just need to contact us directly, Jet Academy, contact us directly, and we will uh, answer to your, to your queries, uh, okay? And also, yeah, for um, those in Thailand and Taiwan, okay, uh, we're glad to inform you that there will be an, another online webinar uh, next month that you could participate in, okay? So, we believe that, uh, of course, this online webinar will be in your mother tongue, okay, next, next month, uh, uh, one in 4th September for Taiwan, and then the ones in Thailand will be on 13th September. Uh, kindly scan this QR code or reach out to our agents, okay? Uh, and also, yeah, for those in Hong Kong and Macau, uh, you are even luckier because there will be EduFairs in your place, okay? So, two EduFairs will be conducted, one in City View International Hotel for Hong Kong and another one will be Holiday Inn in Macau, all right? Then, these are the dates, 19th September and 25th September for this EduFairs. So, kindly uh, search up, reach out to us, okay? Uh, join this webinar or join this EduFair to seek for more information. But also, yeah, again, for uh, all of you, Elsewhere, you know, if like you're from Malaysia or from, from in Indonesia, um, kindly reach out to our agents instead, okay? Reach out to us or, you know, contact us directly if you have got more questions, 
Okay, um, our agents are on standby. They will provide you, you know, uh, the support you need. You can actually ask us through email or also uh, you can set a, an appointment on Zoom for better understanding. Lah. Okay, all right. Uh, now, let me finally, uh, let me uh, allow me to invite our school principal, Yamaguchi Sensei. Yamaguchi Sensei, Imaska Sensei.